What's up everybody, Trinity here and welcome back to Second Street. Smash that like button and let's get right into today's video where we are talking about Ten of Swords, Chapter 6, or Hellions, Issue Number 5, whichever you prefer to call it. This is not a review. We are going into full spoilers in this video and talking about this book. And I did have a couple of these videos shot I've got that I've got to get caught up on here for the Ten of Swords. Uh, big shout out to Chillmonger, a good friend of the channel here who reached out and saw one of my videos like, Hey bro, like that's just not working. I was like, alright, cool. I kind of didn't feel it neither, so we we're reformatting a little bit of it. So anyway, guys, uh, this book here opens up on Krakoa. Uh, there where we see the um, empath is being resurrected, and we see that Charles Xavier is giving him back his memories and everything like that, up to the point, you know, where uh, the, his, he was last backed up, which was just before he went on a mission with the Hellions. And we see that he is who he is. He wakes up. He's kind of a jerk there. Professor Xavier doesn't want to have to deal with him. And we see that Hope doesn't want to have to deal with him either. And she basically tells him to leave after he's like, hey, where's the big ceremony and the people to celebrate me? And she's like, just, we were hoping you'd go out the back door. Just take a hike and and that's kind of what we uh, get the, the set up here at the very beginning of the book I like the way this book opened uh, I, I like the way it opened up here but then we flash to the quiet council of Krakoa where they are obviously missing a few members Apocalypse uh, Jean Grey is not here as well as Storm and we all know where they're at right Anyway, uh, so we see here they're they're having a little bit of discussion about everything going on here with uh, this uh, as <laughs> this contest of swords, as Nightcrawler calls it, and they're sitting there talking about um, just kind of everything going on, the events, and how everything has kind of gone awry here all at once is what Xavier is talking about, um, just like with um, just like the the external gate with. Um, Apocalypse being injured, rock slide, and the the resurrection protocols, and just uh, just everything that has gone there. Now this story did open up two days ago when they were healing uh, Empath there uh, two days ago. So uh, just just. They're, they're having that conversation, and this is when uh, Mr. Sinister steps in. You gotta love Mr. Sinister. I like Mr. Sinister. He steps in, and he suggests, um, he says, The heroes of both Krakoa and Arako travel their globes, collecting swords for the privilege of dancing into a meat grinder. And, um... This, the, and he, sa he says, what if we denied the Iraqi the privilege? What if we let my Hellions do what they do best? Lie, cheat, and steal until Arako's swords are ours. How would they challenge us then? And, you know, and... <laughs> And we can see that um, the Emma, Emma Frost here, she's like, so force a forfeit? And he's like, yes, you know, like, why don't we do that? We, you know, we could send my team in there and do that. And he's like, you know, let's let's have a show of democracy. Let's let's have a show of hands. And we see that five out of the uh, of the members that are there present went ahead and they they voted for this. And so they're sitting there, uh, you know, he's he's sitting there relishing in his victory, you know, that he won on the, on the council. And um, <laughs> this is when Exodus says, you know what, uh, we can't just send a bunch of a bunch of goons in there we they need a leader i think you should go with them and so and of course mr sinister he doesn't like that you know and, you know he has to sit there next to exodus all the time so exodus was sitting there you know probably like you know let's just i just i want to sit next to this guy can we can we get him can we get him out of here so they're sitting there having that conversation and of course they put that to a vote as well which which you know they end up winning. Yeah, Sinister ends up winning. He's like happy. He's like yes. He's like he's like victory has like I, I've I've won I've won again here. Like I don't have to go. Thank you. And of course, after he sits there and he bees Mister Sinister for a minute, you know, uh, <laughs> that's when <laughs> this is when this is when um, Magneto is like, uh, you know what? I'm changing my vote. And, you know, Mr. Sinister, of course, he's not happy with that. He's not happy with uh, having to go. And then we see that, obviously, he goes and gets together with the Hellions to put together a plan and tell them exactly what they are going to go to Otherworld and do, the risks involved in everything like that. But we also uh, get another uh, little glimpse here, one of these white pages here where we're talking about uh, Dry uh, Dryador. Um, this is, um, it says that the, the thief... The fiefdom of Amenth, the region is famine, uh, famine and pestilence. It says the kingdom of Dryador has fallen to the armies of Amenth. Famine and pestilence, uh, pestilence 
of Arako now sit upon the throne. And here they go into and they talk a little bit about the last uh, that last watchtower which we seen in uh, the uh, chapter one creation where they went and destroyed that in Del Delore and th they conquered it. So basically they are now the regents of it. They rule the land and basically they're going in here and talking about Dryador and how they now rule it and how they now look at it as part of um, they, they are now looking at it as part of Arako. Um, so basically Dryador is part of Arako. It's not, you know, it's, it's theirs now. They, they own it. They rule it. So it's theirs. It's Arako. It's not even, you might as well not even call it Dryador at this point. But this was established uh, in issue one of creation uh, when uh, Opal Luna uh, Saturnine had asked them if they wanted to, as the acting regent, if death wanted to, um, if death wanted to, you know, call, call, you know, put into this, uh, this contest of champions, uh, together there. And then, so, uh, we, we, like I said, we, we flashed back here to the Hellions as they are forming their plan, um, getting, of going into Otherworld and retrieving these swords. And we can kind of see all the Hellions getting along here about as good as they are going to get along. <laughs> we see, we see the gray, uh, gray crow is sitting here, uh, having a conversation. He's having a conversation with empath and, you know, he's, you know, they, 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 they just don't get along too well. They don't get along too well. And then, of course, we flash here um, into Bar Sinister, where we see Mr. Sinister, yeah, he has plans of his own. He don't want to risk his life going to other worlds, so what's he do? He does what Mr. Sinister does. He calls a clone. He unfreezes a clone of himself and uh, basically tells a clone, like, hey, man, uh, you're getting ready to take one for the team. Uh, go to Krakoa. And, or not go, go to uh, Arako with these guys and um, help help you know he tells him the plan and he's like uh no why would i go i like i'm so young and look at this body like i'm telling you i, I like mr sinister here um but he, he's like why would i go And he's like that's one hell of a cape the cape is a thing here um but so he's he's telling him he's like no i don't want to go he's like just take one for the team uh you got to go so uh what it comes down to is they decide to uh play paper rock scissors for it <laughs> or at least that's what it looks like maybe they were playing something else but uh, that, so uh, that's that's where this this scene ends up, and then we also get uh, the discussion here of Avalon, and the regent is the Mad Monarch uh, King Jamie Braddock. Now um, we know this. In case you don't know this, you haven't been reading Excalibur. We learned this in the Excalibur series how uh, Jamie Braddock is now in charge of Avalon, and how that came to be. They kind of went in there and battled, and that's when. Um, that's basically uh, when uh, Captain Mar uh, Captain Britain ended up becoming, you know, um, not um, <laughs> not Brian Braddock. Uh, so it ended up becoming Betsy Braddock. So she's, you know, in, if in case you didn't know all that stuff. So uh, they they had to defeat Morgan Le Fay, and so now they are in charge of it. Basically, a mutant is now in charge of Avalon, and they do have a gate there in Avalon. The mutants do. So. Um, and that's they're breaking down Avalon just a little bit here, and then we flash back to uh, Krakoa at the gate, at the Avalon gate, as we see the Hellions getting ready uh, to go through this gate and head to Avalon to uh, see King Jamie Braddock, who is there on his throne, and he has, um, he's there having some issues here uh, with this horse who is there and just doesn't seem to want to get along, and he's uh, talking to uh, to uh, what is his name, uh, Muford. Uh, Muford here, who seems to have a way with horses, quite the way with horses. I mean, he told King Jamie Braddock that he had a way with horses, and the guy's telling him, he's like, no, I, I, I never said that. I never said that. And so the, the, they get their, um, the, the team of the Hellions get there uh, to Otherworld, and they're asking Jamie, like, hey, dude, like, let us, you know, let, like, let us go. We've got, we've got this plan. We've got some stuff we've got to do, you know, for this, this noble cause, for Krakoa and stuff. And uh, he's like, uh, I can't let you through. I mean, this is Otherworld. I've got to tell uh, Opal Luna Saturnine that you're here, basically, like, because she rules this place, and I can't, I'm not overcoming her. Like, no. And they're like, ah, oh, come on. He's like, what? He's like, what? He's like, Mr. Sinner's like, what can I give you? He's like, you know what? He's like, what if I give you a clone of yourself? I'll give you an illegal clone. You can have a clone. It could become useful because you do know that if you die here, um, you can't be resurrected back in, uh, back up, back on Earth. And he's like, well, he's like, mm, that could be useful. And so, you know, they, 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 they kind of make a deal and they're sitting there making deals back and forth. And, well, here's something else that, uh, that <laughs> Jamie Braddock wants. He likes Mr. Sinister's cape. <laughs> so he wants uh, Mr. Sinister's cape. So they're, they're sitting there. They're, they're kind of willing and dealing back and forth. 
and uh, because uh, King uh, Jamie Braddock wants to get rid of this horse, so he gives them the horse, and you know, so they got to give something back, so he gets the cape, right? Like he gets, he, hey, Jamie Brack is getting what he wants here, and uh, we see that Mister uh, Mister Sinister gives it to him. But the thing here that is though that you kind of wonder: is this Mister Sinister, or is this the clone that he unfroze? Now, we don't really know for sure, but my guess is that this, uh, this, this one is the clone. I'm guessing this is the clone here, um, that, uh, of Mr. Sinister, not the one that was unfro that, that he unfroze. Um, this is the one that was frozen. So anyway, uh, we see that they, they, t they take off here walking through Dryador and, um, to go on their mission to retrieve and stop the, uh, the heroes from getting the swords, the, the heroes of Arako from getting these swords. And they're, they're walking through the township and everybody is there kind of staring at them and they're having, uh, you know, they've got, <laughs> they've got, they've got the whole team there. And everybody's, you know, kind of making a big deal. And this is where we see some of the uh, white, uh, what is it, the white priestesses of Opal, Luna, Saturnine. And they're like, whoa, 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 hey, like, you can't be here. We've got to tell you. You're not supposed to be here. What are you doing here? You're trespassing. And we've got to take you in. Like, we can't, you know. And so they're sitting there uh, giving them a hard time. And, of course, uh, this is... Uh, when Mr. Sinister is sitting there asking Empath to kind of deal with it. And Empath is like, uh, no, like, I don't really care. I don't want to be here. He's like, F you guys is pretty much what he's sitting there uh, saying. And he's like, come on. He's like, what do I got? He's like, what do I, what do I have to give you? What do I have to be willing to deal with you to give you, to get you to give, get, get these guys to let us do, to basically pull a Jedi mind trick on them. Right? Anyway, um... So, uh, he sets, uh, basically, uh, he tells, he tells him like, he's like, you know what? He's like, oh, he's like, I'll tell you what, how about you make Grey Crow? Like he has to basically, you know, like be, you know, like kiss my butt. And he's like, okay, like fine, I, I guess I'll let you do this. And we see that he goes ahead and gives, puts a spell on him. And, uh, we, <laughs> we see the Grey Crow here is basically, uh, having to kiss, uh, his butt the whole time because Empath and him just do not get along. And we see that kind of starting to play out here and they end up, uh, getting way, uh, past these white priestesses of Opal Luna Saturnine and make their way, uh, to the, uh, we see them making their way, uh, through to the Starlight Citadel, um, to where they're not supposed to be as they go and track down these swords. And that is all we get in this issue, guys. And I am telling you, um, this is, this is, is like one of those, uh, rare stories here in this, uh, in this Ten of Swords so far, where we've seen like the first couple of issues were like telling the same story, and then the next couple of issues uh, were telling the same story, and then the next one was like a standalone issue. And now here, uh, it seems like Hellions is like its own standalone issue, but you still definitely want to know what's going on in the story. It's not like you can skip any of these chapters. But guys, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. It's kind of cool, you know. Again, this is just the build up to everything uh, going on for uh, this for the Ten of Swords tournament i thought this issue was pretty good i figured something like this was going to happen you know where they're going to try to Im infiltrate and kind of keep these things from happening but uh who knows i mean are they going to make it happen is it going to happen what do you think let me know down in the comments below if you have any theories or anything about that again um just interesting stuff here as this story is continuing forward but let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below if you have any theories or anything like that going forward now Make sure that you stay tuned here to the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and all that good stuff as we are going to be dropping another review where I'm going to be talking about Chapter 7 of the Ten of Swords in one of my next videos. You're going to make sure uh, that you, you're subscribed to the channel so you tune in for that. That's all I have for this video today, folks. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Second Street Marvel. If you're not already, please make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell and all that good stuff. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't, and let me know what you thought about this video, you know, like my good friend Chillmonger did. Hey, like, hey, man, did this not work for you? Let me know down in the comments below. You all have a good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.